be some pretty hard pills to swallow, but it's extremely important for us to look at the reality situation now and how can we make that reality better. Thank you, Senator Sherman. Thank you to both of our witnesses for being here. Um, Ms. Miller, I, I think I understood when you were giving your fifth lesson learned from Afghanistan, I think I understood you to say something like, Ambassador, Afghanistan has not been critical enough to U.S. security at this point for us to continue to stay. Is that paraphrasing basically what you said? Well, I think one of the reasons why it has been hard to um, have the strategic patience that Ambassador Crocker talked about is because at the end of the day, Afghanistan is not central to U.S. national security interests. Uh, and I, I think President Biden would not have made the decision to withdraw if he had judged it to be essential to U.S. national security interests. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. That's what I thought you said. Um, Ambassador Crocker, as I understand what you have said about Afghanistan is that you think it is long-term critical to U.S. national security. Do I misunderstand? Uh, you, you do not misunderstand, uh, Senator. Uh, we um, actively track uh, uh, threats around the world to our national security. There are many groups out there that would like to um, execute such attacks. Uh, but there is only one group that actually did it, and, and that was al-Qaeda sheltered under the Taliban. Um, it happened. These are the actors who brought it about. Uh, we have already seen a return of um, at least one uh, senior uh, uh, bin Laden uh, assistant uh, aide into his hometown of Jalalabad. Uh, uh, the band is coming back together again. And there is absolutely no reason to think that the uh, Taliban now uh, covering Afghanistan are somehow kinder and gentler uh, after two decades in the wilderness. Uh, they will not give up their ideology. Uh, they will not give up their Al-Qaeda ally. And the Islamic State actions against um, uh, civilians mainly uh, in Afghanistan now will virtually guarantee that. Uh, uh, Islamic State may be an existential threat to the Taliban. What they will not do in response is uh, bargain away their uh, uh, ideology. Uh, they will cling to it uh, even tighter now, I think, with the Islamic State threat. So, yes, um, I do believe that there is a threat to uh, American national security. Our defenses are far more robust than they were in uh, 2001, but you don't win a game relying exclusively on defense. And uh, I think that the decision made to pull, us, pull our forces out completely at a time when they were already minimal and during which the Taliban controlled not a single provincial capital, uh, I think that has put our security at risk. Um, thank you. I, I share that view. And I, I would argue that the strategic patience that you're talking about is really dependent upon the extent to which we believe we have um, a critical stake for our country and our national security in continuing to support um, military, our military posture in a place, as you pointed out with Senator Risch, like um, South Korea, like Japan, like Germany after World War II, and where we still have um, significant troops. I want to go back to the tragedy that a number of us have mentioned around women and girls, because Ambassador Crocker, I, I share your view that um, this is one of the most tragic aspects of our time in Afghanistan, a huge success story in that so many women were empowered, were able to go to school, but a tragic outcome when we look at the potential now for the Taliban to totally take away those freedoms for women. And I wonder if either of you can speak to, and, and I share, Ms. Miller, your view that we've got to continue to find a way to get humanitarian aid um, to help the Afghan people, even if that means that, to some extent, we have to work with the Taliban. But what leverage do we have at this point on the Taliban to try and support um, freedoms for women in the country, or at least a better 
station in life for women in the country? I think we have very little leverage over them. I mean, it's not zero. And you see that in what the Taliban are saying, if not entirely doing so far. They are trying to put a good face on their policies. They are saying things unlike what they said in the 1990s about the uh, protections for women and girls, the role of women and girls, girls' education, um, et cetera. Um, there are some women in the workplace still, particularly in areas where they need to interact with other women, and in other areas they are being excluded. So I by no means consider this to be something that should be taken at face value um, and trusted. Um, but there is the fact that there is some distinction in the public narrative they are trying to put out shows that they are aware of the interests of foreign countries whose support they are trying to uh, attract. And that's at least a little bit to work with, but I wouldn't want to exaggerate it by any means. Uh, I think there is also a role for the United States through its diplomacy to collaborate with other countries uh, that have influence over the Taliban, particularly Islamic countries, in trying to influence their policies and press upon them the fact that there are many Islamic countries around the world that that allow girls' education and that have policies that are more open than the Taliban's. Um, so it will take a collective effort and some quite vigorous diplomacy on the part of the United States to marshal that collective effort. Thank you. In order to do that, it would be helpful for us to have our diplomats in capitals around the world, however, and not having them be on hold here in the Senate because there are objections from our colleagues. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Chairman. Senator Romney. 